Hello and welcome to Dell's Gaming and this is from the depths once again and um, this is going to be the second part of the Steam engine efficiency um, videos and in this video looking at propulsion and specifically waterborne propulsion for ships so I've got a little hull here which I'm actually going to use in a little um, uh, ship I've been building for the campaign, a little German um, um, Avi sauce. Um, anyway, that's I will show when I start the campaign. But I thought it was a nice size medium hull, which um, I know floats work okay, and um, we can do some speed tests and show the different sorts of propulsion. So first of all, I'm going to need to bring on my UI. And uh, the first bit we've got to look at is the actual parts that were available. So under steam engines, we looked at the, the small steam engines uh, for creating power last time. And I will be using the small again. Um, everything sort of applies to medium and, and large. Um, but obviously the figures when we come to efficiency may be different and I will have a check of those to see if there's anything potentially different. Now the one area I will not look at at this moment because I want to look at it when I do turbines is the small cranks. I'll quickly show them but I'm not going to use them in this particular version. We're purely going to look at piston based um, propellers for powering the ship and not using the crank motors which I'm going to use in a turbine based system so we'll, we'll see what needs to be done um, at that stage. So looking at the hull um, what we got to do is basically if we take it out, out of the water for the moment is have some um, power coming out the back to drive uh, the propellers so on this particular boat I've set up some places for um, a couple of shafts to come out and um, you've got a couple of ways you can start you can either start building the engine or you could start from the propeller shaft and work up to where you want the engine etc it depends also um, at what stage you're at now to be honest, I tend to get um, most of my hull built up um, before I start adding in um, propellers and engines. I've sort of, sort of, maybe highlighted a few areas where I'm going to put an engine, but I haven't put it in. Um, I tend to get everything built up because that will also give me an idea of how big a propeller I'm going to need and how big an engine, etc., and can start adapting things. So that's just a build, a design. Um, you'll get over time, over time you get the hang of roughly how big an engine you're going to need and how big of a propeller etc. But we're going to go through the basics. So with this, on this we're going to start with the propellers. So on the small uh, we've got two sizes, a one meter and a three meter. But what we need to do, if we just took the propeller and tried to plug it it's not going to be um, doing anything because it says as it says not attached to a steam engine so the first thing we need to do is get a few shafts so we just get a small shaft and make sure when you are placing a shaft you see the um, side that has like the cup rather than the point that's aimed at your um, steam engine unfortunately if you press g to go memory view it, uh, sorry camera direction it will actually put it facing backwards for one of a better word so if we put a couple of sharps down and then we're going to start off with a small propeller now you can see the small propeller is now backwards and i have to turn it around and one thing to always make sure you do is uh, and this will become important later is make sure you orientate it with the camera so you know it's definitely pointed upwards and not to the side or downwards etc um, and that will come important when we actually start sorting out thrust for our engine now I'm not on a mirror line here so at the moment we're only placing one propeller 
but it's pretty I'm pretty damn sure because I know I'm gonna need two because otherwise we're just gonna go in a circle so we will just put these back in again now one thing here is we have a block here how do we go through the block through to the shaft here um, well there is these two meter sealed shafts now they are specifically designed in each of these cases to go through a um, meter of block so if you notice the, the um, as I you can see it's two meters long now as I bring it towards the one meter block one meter of it goes inside now when I click it will connect to the shafts that were on the outside um, or vice versa you know um, I would now see a connection point and that will connect if you want to go through multiple layers of material um, let's say we've got another block there um, what you'll need to do is create another one steam engines two meter shaft and put it in again and those two shafts are now be connected now you can't go through two meters of material you've got to have that air gap in between for um, the shaft to to be in place um, you'll notice also I can place a block in that gap perfectly okay and the dog decided to go crazy for some reason Never mind. So, as I was saying, you can't put a, a block where that shaft is. You can only put it between. So that will show which are you know where you can place the blocks, etc. Okay. Next on here is we're just going to take this back a little while. Uh, we, there is something to be missing that some people already say you need to add, but I'm going to do that in a little while. We're just going to take it back uh, uh, the shaft to where you might want to put the engine um, so we're going to say put the engine here because that's where I've decided I want to put it so we've got shafts going backwards now we're going to build the steam engine in this place so if we just start off I'm going to give it a couple more shafts actually yeah just there will be fine so we're going to need a um, under the gearbox we're going to need a crank to attach the piston to so we'll have a small crank and we're going to um, put a piston on the end of that there we go and we see it has mirrored it quite nicely that's okay um, and then we're just going to put a small gearbox nice and simple and everything turns blue you see everything has quite nicely turned a blue in this case all the way out to the outside and if you cl click on or, or highlight the uh, propeller it will tell you that it's connected um, to the gearbox which is a good thing otherwise we would be no going nowhere um, now I've put this perfectly in line with the shaft but what if um, and this will be the first little add-on what if I wanted the, these engine to be closer to the edge rather um, closer to the center rather than quite so close to the edge let's say I wanted this to be um, we'll just bring it in one for whatever reason there may be we want to bring it in one now there is no um, you know you can see here immediately uh, we're not connecting now one thing simple way is you could say oh okay what I will do is um, have the propeller shaft come out straight through here instead and that would be perfectly viable but also you can use the X small shifting gears you can see this gear I can move it one meter in any direction so I could have the move it up down and if I put this on its side I connect it and it's moved um, 
one in this case to the right but in this side to the left um, and you could keep on doing that keep going with it um, basically as far as you want to go up and or down so that the propeller comes out just where you want it um, uh, there may be various reasons for this um, maybe because of the height of the piston etc you you don't want um, this near the edge you want it in the center so you can put, put some more armor to protect your um, engines which are very valuable um, like in this one maybe I'd want it a little bit closer and then put some more um, blocks oops where are we just to have a nice four beam um, we can put some blocks here just to protect the engine a little bit more and obviously if we had it further in I could put more blocks in um, to give it a protection um, so a number of reasons for using that axis shifting and you know it can um, you can make quite a big difference you can use one down and then you can connect you got to have a shaft and then you can connect another one to go up so you can go to the side and up you're not limited to just one you can have multiple of them joined together okay next we are going to need a bit of steam so let's start out um, putting in a bit a very basic pipe work here uh, nothing too fancy now I'm going to do one thing here is we don't have um, these engines use the same uh, st steam engine basically and just to simplify things so we didn't have start with two pistons uh, or two propellers two pistons all fed from the same steam boiler now in keeping with what I did on the previous one I'm going to use the medium size boiler so if I go steam engines medium boiler and then put a controller in front of it and for the moment set the rate down to zero um, it already started filling up with steam and we're already um, moving the propellers so we know that we have things at least uh, working and connected correctly so this is the very basic um, system and we'll improve it in a number of ways in a minute so key bits we all want to look at now and differences in this particular um, engine I'm going to take off the mirror line for the moment hopefully I'll remember I've taken it off so when we look at the engine the actual gearbox configuration is the same but when we look at the current system output you will see here it says thrust per material previously we had power per material so now we're going to be looking at um, thrust per material to be um, one of the factors on this vessel but we're also going to be looking at the actual speed we get to so we're going to have two factors we need to take into, it, into account we have a similar to the power one we're going to have a crankshaft loss per second and the amount of steam which is not used so we're going to have the steam the boiler steam material is going to be the same um, as we had before which is going to be 1000 oops I say something there so if I just add an arbitrary number you'll notice here we've got 1000 steam mat per material um, and that's a common factor you know a common uh, amount that comes up that is not made any difference as we saw in the previous video um, based on burn rate so 1% is still a thousand um, all the way up to 1 is still a thousand we now have it at 0.1 for the moment uh, materials a second let's see maximum pressure steam capacity okay that's all, all the same as we had previously all right so we got this at 0.1 it doesn't have to go down let me just empty it so that it will um, restabilize up there we go so it's building up pressure 
and these will start to get RPM. If we look at the current system output, we can see boiler steam created, 73. We've got vented, so it's 35, 36. We're getting piston steam to kinetic energy is 25 and the crank loss is almost the same. So it's not really getting anything to um, create, create power. So we've actually got no thrust at this moment. Um, it's not overcoming the amount of kinetic loss we have at 1%. So 1% of, of, of steam is not enough to, to, to overcome basically the crankshaft loss so uh, yeah we need to give it a little bit more so that's your that's your first point uh, um, a at 0 0.07 and we have got two we have to remember we are using two gearboxes here so if it was um, um, a single gearbox and shaft obviously there would be more steam um, what should we do say we, we, we'll mark it down that we are we are doing this as a as a, a twin engine system and I'm just going to mark that down on my spreadsheet so let's put that up a little bit so we we'll take it up to point two and see if we can actually get this to um, move a little bit so we'll go into our current system and 51 we have still got let's just make sure we're going to the water make sure it's not because I'm holding this up all right we're in the water so if we get anything we will start moving now and we still let's see current system output we're still not getting any real movement here and we are at our yep so let's just take it up to 0 0.05 so we now have finally some propeller thrust finally coming out we have now showing some crank cost crank cost uh, crank shaft loss is less than the piston steam kinetic energy so we're actually getting 84 propeller thrust and that gives us a thrust to material of 230 at this level. If we look at it over time, um, let's just make sure our thrust, our steam has stabilized. Yeah, our steam is stabilized. And we're getting a uh, two meters a second. We can see our propellers. Uh, can't see it very well actually because of the, uh, the, the water, but our propeller is moving just not very fast. Um, how many RPM are, are we basically getting? We're getting 4.4, which is not a lot, but at least we're getting something uh, this time. So now on this, we're having to balance two things. We've finally found a level which at least we're getting movement, but we're going to have to balance the crankcase losses, uh, sorry, the kinetic energy losses on the shaft, We've also, we are going to have a certain amount of loss due to drag of the water. Um, so if we take this up to now 10%, and we'll see how this is going to basically work for one engine. And if we get that, that up a little bit further, we're already getting a little bit more speed. Pressure's going up. And the key bit here is we are trying to generate RPMs. We can still, we can see immediately we've gone over that, that point where the shaft loss is a lot less. It's actually, you know, um, we're getting quite a bit of propeller thrust. We've still got a lot of crank cased, um, crank shaft losses a second. But we're getting quite a lot of piston energy this time to be able to get this moving and rotating as, as RPM. Similar in some ways to the uh, um, when we had the, the doing the energy, the power energy. 
Um, the faster we went, actually the more efficient it was becoming, and this is the case here as well, purely for RPM of the um, vessel. Now I'm going to just quickly um, do a whole series of tests to get it up to um, maximum for this particular propeller system. Um, and just make a note of the, the figures just so I can get an idea of actually how efficient this is going to be. Then we'll look at what we can do to make this more efficient and there is two ways um, we can do that depending on what we're trying to do. So let me just have a bit of a muck around with um, um, this burning. Oh, sorry, yeah, the amount of stuff that I'm doing to burn. Back in a little bit. So I've moved the material burning up to 40% and we have now actually maxed out the gearbox um, RPM at 180. The pistons still have input pressure available, uh, although it is moving up because it can't get rid of it quick enough because of the gearbox is maxed out. We've got up to 12, 13 meters a second. So now our problem is with this one piston is we can't get the shaft to run any quicker. So this is where the next little block comes in that can help this to make us go a little quicker. Now I'm gonna actually slow us down here a little bit, uh, back to uh, 10%. Um, actually I'll make it 5% because that was a valid speed or pressure so th that will now slowly sort of whittle down the, the pressure but what we have is the transmission now transmission is a gearbox um, as the name would suggest and if we uh, put the mirror line back on to do this properly and make sure it, it uh, does mirror we'll put the transmission in it takes up two blocks and it has a setting in that we can set a gear ratio. If need be, we could set the ratio down to a quarter, or in this case, what we're going to do is set a two to one gearbox ratio. So now, basically, um, if we have this turning at uh, eight RPM, although it's going down, um, this here, the propeller, is running at 12. Uh, once it stabilizes at the moment it's um, uh, still going down in speed so basically whatever the gearbox is going to turn out the shaft is going to run at um, uh, uh, double the speed basically so let's let it just equalize out on the uh, steam pressure now by simply adding in that gearbox we've now got a gearbox speed of 5.8 and that equates to a propeller speed of 11.2, as expected. Um, actually, is that right? That should be 10.6. So somewhere down the road between 5.8 and um, 11.2, it seems to have uh, changed somewhat. But hey ho, maybe maths for from the depths isn't always the easiest thing um yeah that's a little strange but anyway <laughs> it's not exactly too it the main bit here though is if we look at the stats is actual our crankshaft loss is roughly the same as not having the gearbox and our propeller thrust is obviously much more and the thrust per material is 600 whereas previously it was about 230 so it's actually gone up by more than double I'll double check that one that figure but uh, sounds about right so let me just go through the other power states and then we can look at a graph so this time with the gearbox two and one piston, we've actually uh, reached maximum RPM, actually a little higher on the burn rate. It was it's between 0.4 and 0.5, whereas the previous was 0.3, 0.4. So generally, a lot higher um, thrust per material. I will get a little uh, chart up on the screen at the moment that will show that um, by adding in the gearbox, basically you've 
right-handed it's not double but it's somewhere around about 75 percent more thrust um, i think there is more crank losses due to the gearbox uh, creating crank loss which is why we've managed to need more power to get the uh, the engine speed up to max um so that's been successful and because the thrust has um, increased we've got our maximum speed up to 17 whereas previously it was 11 now because of drag um, there is an efficiency of going slower so the other interesting one um, I will look at later is speed over thrust um, because obviously you've got a certain number of um, materials burning to go a particular distance and um, that could be another little interesting metric for cruising why you might want to go at a, a lower boiler rate so let's say this this is our maximum speed of um, 17 meters a second um, at a boiler material rate let's say actually i'm going to take it down so that it's at the rate which is just right um, Let's see about there it should be somewhere which is only just yeah i think that's going to be about right 2.63 so we were burning 2.63 to go 17 meters a second um what i need let me just calculate those out so on the screen should be a little diagram i've just um, or chart i've created which is meters per material so this shows that actually the uh, the purely because of drag on the vessel creating um, using less materials burning in your boiler um, does increase uh, so going at a slower speed does increase your overall meters traveled per material burnt if that makes sense so basically going slow is good um, so therefore burning less materials in a gearbox is good but that hasn't got nothing to do with the efficiency of the steam engine because the steam engine as we have found previously has no effect on boilers and the burn rate it's all a, this is purely and even here I think it's more efficient to run fast than it is slow uh, which is you know counterproductive um, it's only because of the drag of water is there an advantage to going slow so it's nothing to do with so this will be the same in all systems you'll have for producing um, thrust so yeah um, it make that make sense that's perfectly as you would expect um as i say um but there's no advantage for having big small etc um boilers or any other type of system that i can see at this moment i have put this up as a a point up actually on the uh, uh brilliant skies bug tracker system to say you know there should be something or is this wrong it, why is it more efficient to run fast and hard than it is um, slow and steady there needs to be some sort of bell curve so go too fast it's bad go too slow it's bad there needs to be some sort of sweet spot as such okay nearly done one final bit to look at is you have got larger propellers so if I just take this out of the water temporarily uh, going to back into mode like here and we have got a three meter propeller which we can use now we need three meters of clearance which we don't have there so we're gonna have to um, put this out a little bit far enough so that I can get a three meter propeller on there uh, let's just make sure it's the right way up there so now we've got a th nice three meter propeller let's see what that does to our efficiency curve and uh, basically rpm we'll leave the gearbox in still uh, because that's shown that the gearbox in general does increase efficiency to a degree 
Um, maybe, but maybe about with the three meter, we won't need it. Um, we shall see. Let's just let this spool up. I think we're going to have the same problem again that we're not going to have any sort of steam ability until we get up. So we'll give it 5% um, uh, as the minimum. And I shall once again, uh, what I'll do is I'll just do all the figures and we'll come up with a good old chart at the end once more. So we've got some speed going now at 44 meters a second. It's just topped out at full burn rate. The gearbox has actually uh, gone to max RPM. I think it's only about 95% would be max RPM with uh, these uh, um, this gearbox combination. We're losing a lot of um, gas is getting vented. Uh, for going in, more than 50% of the gas is being wasted. But um, yeah, we've got some good speed. But it is um, it is very, uh, what should we say, uh, material hungry. So let's go for um, let's go take this down and go for an, an efficient engine design. So let's say we already know that a three piston um, set up i.e. three um, uh, pistons together will is more efficient than one on its own uh, so what if we go for a system that has um, two settings um, so I'm going to build an engine here and just show you what I think would be an efficient engine design um, I might make it space efficient as well. Yeah, let's change this as well. Um, so we'll go for a design which is relatively space efficient and gets up to this the maximum speed at flick and also has a very efficient low speed as well. Let's see what we end up with as a as my engine design for. This. I'm, it, I'm not going to say it's the most effic efficient, I think you could go more, shall we say, but let's see what I come up with. Compact design then for this particular ship, not sort of using the current mechanics, so it's not historical etc. Or any other type of necessarily the best, and you can get more efficient. This is just a sort of... Uh, compromise between everything so it's a um, triple um, expansion engine three pistons you can see I've used a slightly different system to, for connecting them where I'm alternating the piston and then coming around the back and over and through the back and up and over um, slightly more compact design for doing the triple rather than having that gap gap in between like I had in the other systems you could put four five six 
27 however many are here to get more but I think the triple it may be in this case you could go to four because it would use only up a little bit more space um, the, the triple for its cost size is efficient maybe four is 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 heading you would get a gain but it's not quite as much and then we've got we're only using small boilers because there is no advantage of using big boilers um, medium large giant whatever um, and if they ever change so that there is an advantage for using larger boilers great perfect then I will use them but otherwise might as well just use the small ones um, they cost about the same in this particular configuration it's the difference is about 20 material because of the, these uh, controllers on the end but that's minor considering how easy these would be to place in places um, you could spread these out in the vehicle uh, pipe them in to be uh, to give you more redundancy rather than having to create a a lot you know an ideal large boiler so these are all set at a burn rate of one because again there is no disadvantage of running at a high burn rate to a low burn rate so you let it automatically fill up and deal with it itself there's no point in uh, running the burn control so the only control we have of efficiency on here is speed uh, so we're going at eight meters a second which um, I found is is quite good um, it's fast enough that with this design the the gearbox is turning at four me, uh, revolutions per minute much slower and actually the gearbox is, um, will keep going actually slower with this three piston um, the triple expansion engine it will run slower but there's still a limit as to how slow it can go so um, this seemed to be good and also this gives me approximately 80 meters um, per material um, as a way of ex explaining um, it's not literally 80 meters um, it's the speed divided by the amount of material so basically um, uh, I'm only using 0.15 uh, materials at this uh, actually I think it's less than that 0.11 materials for this eight meters uh, so if we work that out as to how many of that meters per second it would be the equivalent of 80 meters a second at one material burn hopefully that makes sense I may be able to um, uh, uh, work it out bear with me let me just work that out as a slightly different factor Okay, so a couple of different ways of, exp of expressing the speed to materials. Um, so the basic one is just meters per material. So in this case, is, case it is traveling basically um, 10 seconds, 80 meters for each material which is burnt. Because it's going to take 10, 10 seconds to um, uh, travel 8 meters and it's burning about 0.1, so that means one material by the time it's traveled about 80 meters or another way of doing it if you work on a, 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 a thousand uh, meters one kilometer it takes 13.75 material to travel one kilometer and that's at this uh, low burn rate then we got the high burn rate so um, what happens to make that trigger is uh, we have an ACB which uh, closes this valve so that the it's actively closing so it has to close it um, uh, to stop the high pressure coming through if this could be set at a range um, etc I've just placed a block but you could say if enemy is within range then now let all this lovely high pressure come through so now we're speeding up um, good thing about the high pressure system because the pressure is already there it accelerates quite quickly up to the new high speed because the uh, the high pressure um, steam is just sitting there waiting to be used uh, by the system whilst it's cruising it will fill this up and they're just sitting there waiting um, so okay just waiting for it to get up to its top speed 
it's it doesn't quite get up to the maximum rpm it gets up to about 160 which gets it up to about the 44 uh, meters a second i didn't and um, there was very little gain for managing to go higher so i found this particular size was about as high as i needed to go to get up to the 44 which is still reasonably quick for this size of um uh, ship just using a couple of small propellers effectively um, I think that's quite good yeah with it suddenly ex accelerates it seems to cool down and then suddenly accelerate up to about the 160 yeah there we are yeah, it's getting up there now so oh we're going for a turn this, this, this particular hull is not designed for going this particular speed. I only really designed it to get for going 20 meters a second, which, as you can see, is is more than capable. So 44. Now, so at this speed, it is using. Um, actually, it's gone. It's actually less. 1.62. Let me just change. It was using 6.75 to get up to. Um, this speed but now it's at this spa speed they're each using 1.62 let me just redo my calculation so using the previous um, two figures so um, meters per material we're running at about nine meters per material whereas previously we were running at 80 so this is you know, n using nine times as much material but we are going 43 to 44 meters a second so that also works out to do 1000 um, meters is 110 materials per kilometer basically so you can use either way but basically yeah nine times as much the other one is more efficient and that's as I say purely because of drag through the water and you know once uh, once there's no more enemies around it would just um, change this ACB which would close this valve and then it's now running on this low pressure piston uh, turbine again these have gone to zero because they're full up and once the steam disappears out it runs at eight okay so um, this particular design could be replicated into medium pistons using the slightly larger uh, pistons and props um, or huge etc there's there's the, the basics of what we've done here is the same and I believe the efficiencies ie um, more pistons is more efficient than less pistons and big propellers are more efficient than small propellers and be because of drag going slowly is long distance more efficient than going fast uh, but still there is no benefit of small once you've got you up to your particular pressure there's no advantage of the different boiler sizes uh, I think that you know you could spam a whole load of small ones to drive medium pistons but as I said it would be nice if there was some sort of benefit for burn ratios and or uh, boiler sizes um, to get a more efficient you know speed basically out of your system so uh, uh, whether it be a high speed or low speed it would be nice to to give me some sort of kudos some sort of efficiency bonus for working out how to fit in um, a load of medium size boilers to feed this engine running at a low burn rate rather than just sticking a few small hidden around in a fairly compact armored area um, you know if I had a load of medium boilers in here they'd be subject to getting here I'd have to work out duplicate um, feed lines maybe duplicate boiler rooms all that type of stuff just to get the same as putting these in a load of heavy armor as an example um, overall hopefully that's shown how to how to get efficient how to get efficiency um, you can muck around with this more if you space is no option or object put more pistons in that's easy um, there most probably is uh, as we noticed here 
trying to go too slow on this engine doesn't work so for some ships you might find that um, the big propellers might be too much for it and you can't get your engine low enough, uh, slow enough in which case reduce down your gearbox a little bit um, so that you've got your low speed as I say around I think seven or eight is going to be a good cruise speed for most systems because of way drag I'm sure someone could change that but um, that'll work it out um, but I think that seems from experience from most of the ships I'm doing around the 8 to 10 is, is a good cruise speed I, I find 8 personally is a, is a good um, cruise speed for, for setting my ships um, okay this was a bit of death by charts and uh, <laughs> But hopefully they sort of explained it. You could see the curve and difference of what was happening on the efficiency for the different types of engine, etc. Um, and I'll include the one for the that includes the triple engine um, design or the three meter prop and the gearbox. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I'm now repeating myself. I must stop stop doing that. So any comments down below if you think I've missed anything um, don't I'm not gonna do this again for the, the medium and the large because it's done unless there's something wrong with the system it's gonna replicate itself effectively um, for the other size engines um, so choose which size you would like um, there might be some more interesting designs with these valves with using I, I didn't use storage systems on this one but I didn't think it was necessary for a compact engine um, one downside of this particular engine design is one hit anywhere here and the whole thing is going to go up um, that's obviously something you would have to take into account and armor your engine room up or create m multiple steam engine designs which are in different parts of the ships that's something you'll have to work out how you want to allow for redundancy just something i thought i'd think about whilst i'm there right definitely that's it for now i keep on prevaricating end of video see you next time as always keep playing the game and have fun <laughs>